Hey friends and happy Monday. So I wanted to come on here and I wanted to give a message really quick. It's just going to be a short one, but I want to tell you a story, something that happened to me yesterday. And I love, love how oftentimes the Lord will put me in situations for the very purpose that he has something that he wants me to see. And yesterday, I believe that that was exactly what happened. So we were on my way to my sister-in-law and brother-in-law's house and I decided that I needed to stop at the store while my husband went to get gas and pick up some things for lunch. Now we were coming over to her house at around lunchtime and so I didn't wanna come empty handed with no food. So I said, drop me off and, and go do your thing and then meet me back here and we'll, we'll go. And it's a two hour drive that we had yet to go. So I was kind of just getting all the things together in the grocery store and it has a Starbucks in it. So I went, I ordered my coffee and then I went over to pay for my small amount of groceries that I had in my cart. And as I was walking over to the Starbucks spot, I saw a man and his two young boys. Now, I think that these two young boys were probably, if I had to guess, I would say that they were anywhere between 14 and 16 years old, very young. And the boys had uh, uh, two drinks in their hands, a piece, and then they had a box of donuts. And when the dad was with his cart, pushing his cart, he kind of almost ran into me. And so, of course, I looked up and I was kind of startled and I said, oh, excuse me. And he didn't say anything. And the young boy that he was with made eye contact with me and he said, I'm sorry. And I'm like, oh, that's fine. I mean, obviously the man was in a hurry and, you know, maybe he didn't see me and whatever. That's fine. So I go, I get my coffee, I go in line and I end up right behind them in line getting my few groceries. And like I said, all they had were two drinks a piece and they had this box of donuts and they were getting ready to pay and it was the dad and his two sons and the boys realized that, oh, there's a drink over there that I would prefer other than the drinks that we have. So dad took the drinks that they had and he put them on like this area that was not where the drinks went. They were cold drinks, but he put them in like an area where there was like candy bars or something. And clearly not where they went. And he told the kids, go get the drinks that you want. So the kids bring the drinks back. And the one boy recognizes that dad put the cold drinks back in a place that was not where the cold drinks belonged. So he said let me go ahead and take those to where they need to go. And so the dad got kind of frustrated. Like I, I got the, uh, I, I was under the assumption that the dad was like, why would you do that? I put them away, just leave them there. Um, and so the kid who looked to be the younger of the two boys said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to go put them back where they went, where they go. And so he had the drinks that he had just got the new drinks and he took the four old drinks and he was going to obviously go and put these four drinks away where they went. And the dad got really irritated and he's like, put those down, give me those drinks. I need to pay for those drinks. And he was really irritated and he was really mad. And so the boy was kind of a little startled by that, you know, and he, here he was trying to do the right thing. And so he took the four drinks, put them back down, and then gave the dad a couple drinks that were the new drinks that they were going to choose to drink. And even after he did that, he still managed to make the right choice, went back to where those old drinks were. Maybe it was weighing heavy on his mind. And he said, I'll be right back. I need to go put these drinks back where they go. So I watched him go over and not just like put them close to where they went. I mean, he took all four drinks and lined them up exactly where they went in the cold drinks section. And then he came back. And I wanted so desperately in that moment for he and I to make eye contact because I wanted to just kind of whisper to him, good job. But he didn't look at me and I didn't want to go out of my way to say anything because again, he was someone else's child and you know, whatever. So we get up to the, they finally get up to the register. They're paying for all of their things and the dad is treating the cashier not very kindly. I mean, he wasn't doing anything horrible. He just was rude. And he was very quick and very matter of fact in his dealings. And I watched with great observation these boys looking at their dad. And I paid attention to how they were watching him as he treated this cashier very poorly. And I could not help but think how badly this broke my heart. Because the truth of the matter is, 
our children are watching us. Are they not? I don't have to tell you this. You already know. If you are a parent, you know that our kids are watching us. They are watching our movements. They are watching what we say. They're watching what we involve ourselves in. They are watching when we make poor choices. They are watching when we choose to watch TV that is like complete filth. They are watching everything that we are doing and they are forming their ideas and their opinions and their values based on what they see in us. Is that a great responsibility? Yes, it is. Absolutely. And having children and raising children, it's a great responsibility, but they're watching Grandmas, grandpas, mimis, papas out there, your grandbabies are watching you. They are watching how you interact with people. They are watching how you offer forgiveness towards other people. They are watching as you speak to the cashier, how you are handling discomfort and, and how you are handling adversity in bad situations and circumstances. They are watching you as you converse with the person who is serving you a meal at a restaurant. They are watching how you talk to their teachers. They are watching you behave. They are paying attention to what you are saying and they are forming, again, this, this, this basis, this foundation of the way that they see the world this foundation lens from which they will see and view the world is being formed by what they are observing in your life. And it matters. It matters. I just told somebody today the, the best, the greatest gospel message that you could ever show is through your life, not through your words. They are observing how you live, how you act, how you carry yourself what you allow them to do. Like, I know it doesn't seem really horrible that the worst thing that you could do was leave cold drinks out for someone else to take care of in a store. I understand that's not a terrible thing. But those small things that we compromise in our life and the small compromises that we demonstrate to our children will eventually be the way that they handle situations. So one day they're going to be in their mid-30s or 40 years old, like this man with his boys was. One day they're going to be 35, 36, 37, 49, 52. And they are going to be making choices based on the habits that they created that stem all the way back from when they were 15 years old. And their dad failed at upholding integrity and teaching his children the wise choice to make when it comes to taking back drinks and putting them back in, in the proper place that they were to begin with. So my whole entire point in saying all of this is be wise when you make these choices. Be wise because little eyes are seeing you. Whether you are a parent whether you are an aunt or uncle, a grandma, a grandpa, whether you are a teacher, whether you are just someone who at some degree has some sort of authoritative responsibility over young minds and hearts, people, you have to know that these little ones are watching you and they are making choices in their life based on what you have demonstrated to them, what you've shown to them, what you have, what you have suggested to them through the way that you have lived your life. So it is a great checkpoint for ourselves. You know, the first thing that I did is I got in the car and I started to explain the situation to my husband. But before I did, I said, I want to give a caveat to what I'm getting ready to say. And I want to thank you for being a man that was always filled with integrity when you were raising our daughter. Because of you, she is an adult now who can make good choices and good decisions because you didn't compromise. Not just compromise in your faith. You didn't compromise in the small little choices, the small little decisions that you were a part of making the entire time that she was growing up. 
because you understood that little eyes were viewing you and little ears were hearing you and it matters. It matters. So I just want to encourage you today, if you have influence or authority, or if you are, you know, have any kind of, kind of authoritative role in the life of any young person, whether or not they're a young, 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 small child, whether they're a middle schooler or whether they're a young 20 something, you know, it, it, it's all relative, right? To how old you are. If, if you're 72, chances are your 50 year old daughter can still benefit from the way that you make choices, right? The way that you live your life, the way that you honor God with your decisions and choices. So it's all relative, right? Do you have influence over anybody and, and, and if you do, which I'm assuming that's probably like 99% of us, if you do, then you have every reason to look inside and go, you know what, God, help me to make the right, the right, the right wise choices. Help me to make choices that honor you, that glorify you, and that point others to you because of how they see me live my life. I hope that this has encouraged you today, friend. Just a real life story that I wanted to share with you today. I love you. I am praying for you. And I'll see you next time.